Everybody. Uh, the GCDR uh, as a cognitive concept uh, has been uh, with us uh, at least since uh, 2017 and, and uh, it is here to stay. Uh, the definition, uh, a good definition, has been uh, produced by John Hopkins University establishments. Uh, though uh, this definition is a little bit awkward, it is too long, it is a little bit biased towards uh, private sector and uh, free economy and stuff like that, uh, allow me to uh, try a somewhat different uh, approach in here. Let's take it literally, uh, letter by letter. So, uh, GCBR stands for Global Catastrophic Biological Risk. Uh, the global uh, refers to uh, the extent uh, it's a sp a sp a spatial but also temporal, as we will see in a while, uh, in a minute. Uh, catastrophic, it's about the impact, uh, referring to the severity, not to the object of the impact. Biological uh, describes uh, the causality, the agent, the nature of the agents, not the object of the impact and the damage. And then we have uh, the very uh, small and uh, very important word, uh, word risk. Uh, this uh, defines the condition of uh, the, the whole cognitive entity. It is uh, a prospective entity. It's not uh, an event, actually. Uh, we all use it uh, as a DCBR uh, refers to events, but it, it, it really doesn't. Uh, more about that uh, uh, in uh, uh, seven, I think, in uh, eight slides. So, uh, uh, referring to global, uh, we usually say that uh, GCBRs do not understand borders, do not feel borders. Yes, that's true but they are somewhat limited by barriers. And when we're talking about barriers, we also mean barriers of geography. Uh, the catastrophic uh, clause uh, uh, can be uh, uh, divided to disruptive and uh, destructive uh, di dimensions. And uh, the biological, it's, uh, seems easy to understand. Sometimes it is a little bit tricky. For example, uh, referring to bioagents, mostly microorganisms, and to microorganisms, uh, in, in this case, viruses are by definition included. Uh, viruses are microorganisms, but they are also uh, the, the most hot issue in the CPR. Uh, since uh, we have the viruses in, uh, we can't but include the viroids. Uh, we would be uh, very impolite not to do so. Uh, but uh, the microorganisms is not, uh, are not the only uh, factor. Uh, it, uh, it's uh, the most usual, the one we refer to uh, in most cases. Microorganisms can also, uh, may also cause uh, uh, this kind of trouble, this kind of uh, uh, serious disasters. Uh, allow me to refer to just two, the locusts and the rats, uh, which uh, uh, may cause famine to whole uh, regions or even countries. So uh, the GCBR, uh, the, the bioagent, uh, might not be uh, only microorganism. Let's not, uh, sorry, uh, rather, uh, let's uh, be more open in our thinking, in our thoughts uh, about uh, uh, recognizing and uh, uh, planning for threats. Uh, what is the most tricky part is uh, that uh, GCBRs, by definition, do not uh, refer to chemical and radiological agents. Uh, well, 
not the chemical uh, radiological agents. What uh, happens with toxins? Mm, actually, toxins are biochemical agents. Uh, my, in my humble opinion, they should not be uh, they should not be among the agents of GCPR. The prions, on the other hand, uh, which cause disease, I mean, mad cow disease, and this disease uh, was in, uh, during the 90s uh, spreading throughout Europe. Yes, they are. They, they have been uh, pretty catastrophic. Uh, they, they're just uh, one molecule. So what happens around here? Uh, I think I have to admit that uh, the biology, pre the prerogative of being biological, in uh, this case, it's more about self-replication than anything else. It's not a matter of size, it's not a matter of structure, it's things of uh, biological origins that can, uh, with many uh, quotation marks, self-replicate. Well, uh, the most important uh, thing about uh, GCPRs uh, is the spatiotemporal extent. Uh, there is uh, this uh, very nice word, global, uh, which is in inclusive in nature. It's not descriptive. It means we do not uh, need to have the whole globe uh, covered, but uh, it, uh, we have to admit it's something uh, more extended that, uh, than uh, something called intercontinental. The intercontinental means between at least two continents. For the global, I would propose a two plus one principle, meaning at least two continents from the world island. Uh, that's uh, the definition of McIntyre uh, more than one century ago. And uh, uh, plus uh, one, at least one from the other two continents, uh, uh, the latter being the Americas, uh, uh, North and South America uh, are taken as one continent, and, Oce uh, and Oceania. So two plus one at the very least in this way, uh, we cover uh, all the four quadrants uh, of the globe, uh, east uh, and west uh, hemispheres, north and south hemispheres. Antarctica is not yet in the picture, it's semi-isolated, but the thawing of the ice caps may change this. And, uh, you know, uh, we will sooner uh, rather than later have uh, to uh, ponder upon uh, how to integrate it into the two plus one principle. Uh, the other thing is uh, the temporal issue, the bioagents. First of all, bioagents uh, uh, must be around for some time in order to take effect and uh, also in order to create interactions and associations uh, to our demise, of course. Uh, so the temporal extent, the temporal dimension is inbred in the biological risks. But uh, there is also another uh, level in uh, the, the temporal clause. Uh, usually, we take the GCBRs uh, in uh, the wider sense as uh, singularities. That means a single agent event, as was the Ebola epidemic, emerging in one primary location. That means it is a unifocal event that uh, later spreads. Well. That might not be that simple, actually. Uh, in some cases, uh, we might have temporarily surging and spatially converging events uh, and outbreaks. Uh, that refers to events and outbreaks from one single agent, but not in the one single focus uh, which expands. And there's also the multiplicity, the multiple events with uh, uh, different agents uh, and in a spatiotemporal association and possibly interaction. I have to bring to your attention what happens, uh, happens or might happen uh, in uh, our days with the COVID-19 the, uh, the COVID still raging and the monkeypox uh, uh, being politely introduced to us and saying, uh, you know, uh, it's not all the attention going to the COVID-19. I'm here too. I, I want a piece of the action as well. Uh, uh, this makes a, a rather explosive, makes, might make a rather explosive mixture in, in how to allocate uh, resources uh, what, uh, against what to fend off first. 
the second thing is, uh, as we said before, about uh, catastrophic. Uh, it's a global catastrophic biological uh, uh, risks. So, uh, how do we define catastrophe? Uh, okay, it's a Greek word, uh, and uh, in here for GCBR, maybe uh, the definition, a working definition, would be the disruptive or destructive effect that causes a negative quantum leap in a biological spatial temporal continuum. Uh, that, uh, bi uh, sorry, in a biosocial sp uh, spatial temporal continuum. Uh, John Hopkins University and some others and myself. Um, we always tend to think that the, the social dimension in the GCBR is very important, especially uh, in uh, concerning the effects, but also uh, the causes. Uh, maybe we'll dwell a little bit uh, more on that uh, truth uh, in a while, but uh, uh, we also have uh, to speak the same language when we, uh, we're talking about extinction. It's the deletion of a population in a spatial continuum. Uh, what's a spatial continuum? Okay. Uh, it might be the deletion of the microbiome in my armpit because uh, I overuse the uh, 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 alcohol or, or uh, whatever uh, uh, bio uh, bio amenity, uh, or it is uh, the extinction of the whole biosphere of the planet in a generalized nuclear war, uh, which becomes uh, less unthinkable, unfortunately, than it has been in uh, uh, the last decades. Uh, how can uh, we differentiate, uh, uh, how can uh, we classify destructive versus disruptive? Destructive degrades the health of animates or the structural and uh, functional integrity of inanimates. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. The disruptive, on the other hand, could be understood as taking a directly destructive dimension, actual or perspective, and uh, leverage it to disproportionate uh, damage and loss uh, without necessarily the direct implication of, uh, of some agent. For example, panic is uh, the most well-known and most feared uh, disruptive agent. Uh, many measures are taken uh, in order to avoid spreading panic, but uh, Nowadays, we have also to concern ourselves uh, seriously with the supply chain collapse, which um, happened during uh, some phases of the COVID-19, and unfortunately, uh, it's here to stay. We will see more, uh, more of this, uh, I I'm afraid, uh, in the years to come, not to say days to come. So, let's move to the threat objects. Threat objects is... Uh, uh, a civilianized word for what uh, the military community calls targets. Uh, the target of a biological incident, attack, assault, uh, event, might, they might be animate organisms. So, okay, we, are, we can all understand this. Uh, it, it, must, it might be the environment, the wildlife, and uh, um, I would like to propose here uh, the concept of the humanome, it's the whole of humanity plus all the organisms that are dependent on human action to survive in uh, the current setups, like uh, uh, the intensive exploitation of uh, plantations and uh, livestock. If something happens uh, to the people that uh, uh, take care of uh, such exploitations, most probably animals and plants will die. For for different reasons, but uh, they will die out. Uh, I think uh, we tend to forget about uh, biological assault, biological danger, is that in some cases, uh, the, the, the object of the damage might be inanimate. In this, allow me to introduce another term, technida. Uh, it's uh, something equivalent to fauna and flora, and uh, is taken as uh, the inanimate material or cognitive construct of organisms. Uh, it's uh, the nests of uh, the ants or the nests of uh, birds, uh, tools if uh, some other than, the, than human animals are using tools, some monkey species I heard they're using uh, 
uh, tools, crude tools, but tools nevertheless. It, uh, but uh, allow me to uh, bring to your attention the passages, the passageways, uh, the itineraries uh, for mass migrations, or for anything else. Uh, the passages are not constructs. They are not material. Uh, they are not material constructs. They are cognitive ones, though. Uh, someone discovered it and passed the knowledge to others, and uh, they say this is the best way to move. Uh, so it's something intelligent, something uh, in the widest of the senses, technical. Uh, I have here the word environmental. Uh, it, it was coined by Guralos Demir. I think it was 2018, or then it might have been 2021. Uh, this is a very complex, but in some cases, uh, very helpful definition, uh, which uh, actually includes all the above, animate, inanimate, material, immaterial aspects, uh, uh, everything. And then we come to my favorite, the risk factor. GCBR is uh, global catastrophic biological risks. The risks, the risk, the uh, word risk underlined. In the narrow sense, uh, risk refers to prospect, to future, not to an event. Event is a reality. It's a present and of course it might be past. So an epidemic, a pandemic, an outbreak is an event. The possibility to see it or to see it uh, developing and changing scales, uh, that's a risk. So the GCBR risk might lead to the CE. It's a CE is for catastrophic event. Uh, it, it, it can be very uh, impactful events, not catastrophic, but subcatastrophic ones. Uh, we had seen the definition of a catastrophe, uh, catastrophe before. So the COVID-19 is of course uh, a CE. Uh, the Irish potato blight, uh, the Black Death in the Middle Ages, all these are excellent examples of uh, catastrophic events. Well, uh, within the GCBR, it's uh, the ER, the existential risks. All GCBRs do not refer to existential level risks, but uh, uh, these are a very ominous subcategory of GCBR and could uh, develop if they materialize the ELE, extinction level event. Uh, to be honest, I am not sure I know any extinction level event uh, caused by a biological agent. I mean, uh, okay, the dinosaurs were extinct, but I'm not certain it was a biological agent. It was something else. So in any case, uh, there must have been many, at least throughout the centuries. Simply, I could not think of one uh, uh, as a good example. What I can think of, though, is that ELEs are thwarted by variance, variety, and diversity. So uh, keeping biodiversity is a very, very, very good idea. And uh, on the other hand, they are, prompted, they are prompted by clonality and uniformity, as uh, in uh, mass uh, and uh, uh, intense exploitations of uh, agricultural, but also industrial. So that should, uh, you know, uh, make us think whether our practices are uh, are not uh, brewing uh, some uh, future uh, dangers, not not just risks, dangers. Uh, allow me to divert a little bit uh, with the, the uh, individualization aspect. Uh, I'm uh, sick and tired of hearing uh, all the time about individualized therapy, individualized medicine, individualized treatment. Yeah, okay, that's uh, the new hot stuff. It focuses on one patient or victim or target, use whatever uh, objective word you want. But we have to admit uh, it is uh, extremely detailed, uh, usually high tech, uh, it is slow and it is expensive. So when you have a massive event and GCBRs are massive events, Mm, that's maybe not uh, the best idea. On the other hand, uh, the good old-fashioned selective therapy medicine, uh, I use the selective in order to make a, a, a most, and uh, to underline the difference with the individualized clothes, it focuses on the pathogen. So 
Uh, it's fast, it's massive, it's cost effective. It's not that accurate. Okay, uh, so uh, in some cases, a therapy for some of the prospective victims might, might work, for some might not work, but the point is uh, the selective approach allows the massiveness, the volume, the intensity we need to contain uh, GCBR before uh, leading to something, um, before leading to a catastrophic event. Uh, in here, it might be a good idea to also uh, mention the individualized disease, uh, individualized by assault concept. Uh, well, that's uh, the opposite of uh, therapies, but uh, it's uh, the individualized part that uh, uh, makes it very interesting. Uh, that refers to selecting bioagent for, uh, uh, for aggressive purposes, of course, by studying a target, especially its genetic content, but not only that, I mean, all the, the biological uh, uh, liabilities. And uh, thus, the, the individualized biosol might be extremely uh, disastrous. It's a very threatening approach, and uh, it's little discussed and rarely recognized as a bioethics issue when we're talking about genomic medicine and the need to massively uh, sequence uh, in a whole genome scale or whole exome scale uh, entire populations. Well, we say, uh, yes, uh, you need to know your genome in order for your pharmacist uh, to, to produce uh, individualized uh, therapy regimen. Mm, okay. But what happens if all this wealth uh, of genomic information, uh, and other genomic information, genomic is that's uh, the most prominent, is used in order to find human bioweapon? Uh, bio I mean, synthetic biology right now uh, does uh, it works miracles, right? There are some things uh, always, uh, by definition, all things have uh, at least two aspects. It's uh, better to start uh, taking the negatives uh, into more serious consideration. And so to sum it up, uh, regarding responses, I, I have uh, deleted uh, a slide uh, uh, about uh, legal frameworks. Legal framework is, uh, uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, maybe the most important step. It enables all the others. It is the basic, uh, or rather the main enabler. So in order to have response uh, against the CBR, or at least uh, in order to have successful response, what you need to do is to have proactive pl uh, planning, and especially the surveillance assets must be on place or readily deployed. That means you have, uh, you should have a, a, a responder entity uh, must have uh, a contingency plan. Uh, it uh, must uh, have uh, high high readiness, and uh, except uh, for the planning uh, and uh, the uh, pre-located uh, assets, uh, it is imperative uh, to have design tested uh, and. Uh, uh, make sure that uh, there is the possibility for fast intelligence exchange and uh, networks that will be working under uh, under strain. It's the only way that dispersed detection and the identification and containment operations can work. And this is very, 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 very vital in order to allocate uh, the always limited resources in the best possible way in space, time, and threat level. So, uh, given that resources are always uh, less than one would hope for, uh, you know, uh, uh, responding to the CBRs is a, a very uh, expensive sport, uh, a very expensive uh, pastime. Uh, the idea is to plan for uh, pooling uh, resources. That pooling uh, it could apply among states, but also within states, with in-state state, in state, sorry, stakeholders. Uh, everyone must have a contingency plan and be ready to be commandeered in order to help. Uh, 
to do so, uh, we have to define some critical uh, supplies and then force uh, supply chain robustness in order not to run out of tests or of uh, vaccines or of uh, 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 resumes and to be able uh, to deliver them where needed. And uh, there are some uh, two uh, personal favorites. Uh, first, uh, I'm uh, uh, a staunch supporter of uh, low tech, low cost, and uh, generally speaking, agnostic solutions uh, uh, regarding uh, the diagnostics because uh, you do not know the mo most probably is that you do not know beforehand what kind of threat what time uh, what kind of uh, risk factor we are going to face so uh, if there is a, a flexible uh, a flexible and perhaps not that precise uh, diagnostic asset that would work in many cases many solutions many environments and uh, that's the best thing to do. I'm just uh, referring to PCR. Uh, I'm just mentioning PCR. There are also other agnostic, uh, agnostically friendly, agnostic friendly solutions. Uh, I'll say that again, that's uh, my personal favorite. And having nothing to do with my, uh, with being my uh, personal favorites, uh, uh, the responding authority must contain as much as possible the disruptive leverage. In many cases, as we said before, uh, that's the definition of, of uh, disruptive damage. Uh, the disruptive dimension might be extremely catastrophic, whereas the destructive might not have been so. Uh, this doesn't necessarily need uh, high-tech diagnostics, uh, high-tech uh, resumes, uh, scientists, uh, uh, and so on. The, uh, to contain the disruptive leverage, needs other means. Means for which uh, I'm not the person uh, to talk about. So thank you very much uh, for staying with me even virtually. Uh, I would like to wish to everybody have a nice day. I would like you to stay with us for a few minutes that we can have some questions from participants, both online and physical. For for those who are online, if you want to ask a question, you can raise your hand, you can choose the option, then you shall select for me and ask your question. We shall take the same approach for the physical participants in case there are any questions. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I have uh, my question is on, uh, we have this uh, concept that is new for us, that uh, uh, GCDR. But uh, also you have uh, other concepts such as uh, uh, infection prevention and control. And uh, mm -hmm. we also have uh, the international uh, health uh, regulation. So I don't know, can you explain us uh, what is the differences or the link between all uh, these concepts? Uh, could you be a little bit more specific? I'm afraid I didn't uh, quite uh, got the question. Okay, I said uh, you have uh, this concept that is uh, GCDR, but mm -hmm. uh, also have other concepts uh, such as uh, infection prevention and control. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have uh, the international health regulation that uh, was developed by uh, WHO. So my mm -hmm. question is, uh, what is the d difference uh, between all these three or the link between them? Uh well, it is uh, rather, uh, to be honest, uh, as I understand it, uh, uh, I'm not an expert in regulations and informing policies, uh, but it is uh, a difference in uh, scalability. I mean, GCBR needs uh, all the things that uh, WHO does, but uh, it uh, it is uh, always something happening uh, rather abrupt, abruptly. That's uh, why it is uh, uh, so dangerous and we spend so much time and energy on it. And the second thing is that uh, WHO, I'm not very certain uh, whether 
they take into consideration seriously the fact, the possibility, sorry, it's not a fact, that in, in a GCBR there might be hidden uh, an enemy intelligence knowing how WHO and others operate and thus taking every possible measure to deny uh, the effectiveness of uh, such uh, operation responses and procedures. So in the GCBR, when we're talking GCBR, at least from where I'm standing, uh, I would always bring uh, into the discussion uh, some dimensions uh, uh, ranging uh, from uh, military to uh, intelligence services. They come handy. They, they have learned how to cooperate, so even if it is a spontaneous event, uh, 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 they are uh, up to date, uh, they know how to operate, they understand the concept of readiness. Uh, but uh, uh, let me not uh, di uh, digress any further. Uh, I think my answer to your question is, uh, it's not uh, the difference per se, uh, it is the difference of uh, how we apply uh, uh, the principles uh, uh, hammered out uh, by, H uh, by WHO uh, for GCBRs. It needs uh, some modification, some updates, uh, some fine tuning. Uh, it is a slightly, or not slightly, different context. The, basic, the basics, though, the biological uh, base uh, of the facts, uh, the biological principle is uh, more or less the same. I mean, you have a, a decent proportion of what needs, uh, what one needs, uh, what one needs to take care of uh, GCBR by simply having a very, very, very good uh, healthcare system. Uh, a great proportion, not everything. There are other things. For example, as we stated, uh, the ability to contain the, the disruptive uh, leverage of uh, an event. Yes, thank you very much for that. I hope I answered the question. I'm not certain I did, though. He is convinced you answered the question. Yeah.